Well, here it is. This is what I've been working on for almost a year now. This is a 16 by 32 uh, workshop barn shed building. Um, the door on the left goes into the uh, CNC room. The door on the right goes into the main workshop. And is it finished? Well, stick around. We'll do a walkthrough and find out. Well, you can see on this side, it's it's most of the way complete. Um, I do have a ledger board there for a small deck that we're going to put on the front here so that I can get access to these two shed doors from the ground a little bit easier. Um, this side of the building over here is not complete yet. It's basically dried in, but I don't have the siding on it. Um, the right side of the building is, uh, is finished also, but the back side is not. I had to finish the right side in order to get the air conditioning installed. Um, so we installed temporary stairs here on this side just to get in and out of the building. The shed doors on the side of the building are really just going to be used to get equipment in and out, um, get the airplane in and out. So let's go ahead and go inside and take a look. Turn the lights on in here. There we go. All right. Well, this is the main shop. You can see the Cree Cree is in here. In fact, it's been in here for a long time. Um, I've got the main entrance door here that I just walked through. I've got a wall over there with a sink on the left. I'm planning on putting uh, a bench all the way across this wall and uh, around the corner here to the door. The bending break that's over there is going to be on the other side of the room here. But uh, um, this room's fairly spacious. I'm actually pretty happy with the size of the, the workshop space. It might not look very big in the camera, but uh, it's uh, plenty big enough to work on a, on a Cree Cree for sure. Um, I'm also going to put a bench along the, the wall there underneath the window between the, the shed door there and where the entrance is down at the end of the room there to the CNC room. So you can see I did install a Mr. Cool uh, heating and air conditioning system in this building. I've got a four zone uh, you know, HVAC system. Um, I basically have four rooms between the main workshop room down here. I've got the CNC room back there. And then there's two rooms upstairs that we'll go and take a look at in a minute. So let's go ahead down this way. Um, there's a stairwell here that goes upstairs. Um, I did completely finish off the underside of the stairs. Uh, I've got a hot water heater, um, you know, on-demand hot water heater underneath there. I did go ahead and sell my 80-gallon uh, upright uh, compressor. I just replaced that with an inexpensive Harbor Freight um, compressor that would fit underneath the stairs here. So kind of a nice fit. I like having it hidden underneath there. I'm going to put a door on here um, so that we can try and cut down on the sound when it's, when it's running. So um, yeah, so if we get down to the end of the room here, you can see it goes in here to where the CNC room is. And let me turn the light on in here. There we go. So this is about, what, 15 and a half or 15 by 10. Um, so it's not a large room. It's just big enough for the CNC machine to fit in here. And of course, I can walk all the way around it, which is nice. Um, I do have the shed door here so I can bring materials in from the outside easily. Um, but it's nice just having a room now that's going to be enclosed. You know, I can put a door here so we'll be able to keep all the dust and debris that this machine creates uh, out of the rest of the shop, which was one of the main goals that I wanted to have with a new workshop. The uh, workshop that I had in uh, California was uh, completely open. So, you know, doing things like cutting a new spoil board here where you're cutting and shaving down a sheet of MDF, even if you have a vacuum cleaner on it, it doesn't contain all of the dust. So. Anyway, if you go back here, um, there is another entrance uh, to the underside of the stairs. Again, it's for storage. Um, and so you can see underneath here, I did completely finish off underneath the stairs. And uh, yeah, so anyway, nice, easy place to get storage to. I'll be able to run all my uh, you know, airlines to the uh, compressor in there. Uh, so let's head back out here. There you get a good view of the shop from this direction. So, got the nice window outside. So this is uh, it's gonna be a nice space. It's not huge, but it is actually more space than I had in uh, California in that workshop from before. So 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and head upstairs. I don't have any lights connected up here yet, so we'll see how uh, how the video turns out. This is completely vaulted all the way to the ceiling here in the hallway. Hopefully that shows up good. I do have a light on the floor here I can turn on. So let me go ahead and get some light turned on here. I'll be back in just a second. So at the top of the stairs here, I just plugged in that light. Um, we've got just a little alcove here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a countertop here with a couple cabinets and a little uh, under counter refrigerator so that we just have a countertop to kind of have a, I don't know, coffee bar kind of half kitchen area. There's not even gonna be a sink there or anything. So it's just kind of an extra, extra space. It's kind of, uh, you gotta try and be a little bit careful about how you finish things up here because of the barn ceiling. Uh, the barn ceiling has a tendency to make things somewhat unusable. It's a little more difficult to get doors up here because they have to be offset, you know, not to the edge of the wall, but offset to the, you know, closer to the center of the wall. Um, I did uh, install pocket doors here, partially because of that, because I didn't want a door swinging out into the middle of a room on either side. So this room over here, this is going to be storage and probably a small workshop area. I think I'm gonna put a bench underneath the window up here. Um, this is directly above the CNC room. Um, but yeah, the primary purpose of this was mainly for storage, but it'll also be, like I said, a small workshop space. And again, I've got the uh, Mr. Cool air conditioning heating unit on the wall. And so now we're gonna go across, head over into the other room over here. Let's see if I can flip the light around. There we go. Okay, so when you walk inside this room, what we did is we just enclosed a small closet area that we're just gonna put a shelf across and do some, you know, under shelf uh, space there for hanging clothes if we wanted to. We did go ahead and install a full bathroom up here. I kind of looked at this area, this, this, this side was really gonna be office space, but I also wanted to have it double as a, uh, maybe like a guest room or something like that. I figured since I was putting water uh, and sewer into this building for the sink downstairs, there was no reason not to go ahead and finish this off. So if we come, turn this this way. So if we come into the uh, into the room here, we just got a vanity here with a pocket door going into it. The other doorway here goes into the toilet room and the shower, um, which the toilet's gonna go right there on the floor right next to the shower. And then you can see the full, well, the full shower here on this wall. So anyway. I've got a lot of finishing to do. I've got all the drywall done, but I don't have any of the, uh, you know, taping, mudding, and finishing done on the workshop here. So um, I'm getting really close. I was really, really pushing to get to the point where I had everything dried in, had all the doors on the outside of the building installed so that it was sealed for air conditioning purposes. Um, so now I've got all the drywall up. I've got the heating and air conditioning working. It's all on, and I've got everything sealed up, including the shed doors downstairs, which I just finished in the last few days. So this is gonna be the office room upstairs. It's the smallest of all the rooms. Again, I've got a heating and air conditioning unit on the ceiling, but this, uh, I think this room is only like eight and a half feet wide um, by 15, but we're gonna put a little office space up here. Um, and you can see there's a window. This is the window that's on the front on the end of the building. So got a nice view outside, it's pretty out there. There's a tree right here, so you kind of feel like you're in the middle of a tree house up here kind of pretty. So anyway, this is basically the workshop. I've got a lot of work left to do as far as finishing the, the drywall. Um, I'm going to start working on that this weekend. I'm trying to get this upstairs area done first so I have the office space up here to use and I can start putting stuff in this uh, storage room over here on the other side. Um, I do have some materials up here already, but uh, some of my stuff is still in storage. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and walk back downstairs. Um, the CNC machine is in here, um, but I don't have it working yet. Uh, I still have to get the computer brought over with the cabinet, the computer cabinet, the screen and everything. Um, I've gotta hook up the, uh, the vacuum system for the table. I do have all the electric done in here though, so you know the outlets are in the floor over here, or in the wall over here for the uh, CNC machine. Um, I do need to level this, clean this machine up, and get it working again, but that shouldn't take very long. That's kind of one of my first goals before I even, you know, work on finishing the uh, drywall down here is just to get this machine working again. Um, so if we go back out in the other room here, you can see there's the Cree Cree. 
And if you saw my last videos I did where at least the intro showed the airplane looking like this, I basically have not touched it since, um, you know, since last, let's see, I really haven't touched it since last fall. Um, when I came here in November to start working on this building, I basically stopped working on the Cree Cree. I obviously did some videos back in, uh, what it was, uh, January, February time frame. Um, and I still have a couple videos left to do. I, I haven't done the video where I even attached the rear fuselage. I haven't done the video for the forward fairing for the canopy or the rear fairing for the canopy, which I'm going to try and finish. Um, uh, basically starting now once I have this video done this was kind of my get back into working on the Cree Cree again um, I'm trying to source materials for the wings at this point uh, one of the things I've decided to do is to uh, go with the, uh, the the slightly more expensive and uh, you know uh, foam that uh, goes in the wings um, the wings themselves uh, you know, they use the same foam that we've used in all the other components, uh, the, the Divini Cell H100, but I'm having some, some concerns, not concerns, but I, I'm finding it very frustrating to try to do the heat treating process on the ribs. And so what I'm trying to do with the wings is actually buy the HT brand of, uh, or model, I should say, of the Divini Cell uh, 100. Um, I'm going to attempt to use that, which actually provides 20 degrees celsius higher temperature um sustainability from from you know shrinkage so i'm really thinking at this point that that gets up to almost 180 degrees of of temperature before you start having some shrinking issues and honestly when i was doing the heat treating of the foam i could really only heat treat it to about 180. if i get anywhere close to 200 and of course the, the temperature varies up and down quite a bit just because of the you know trying to heat that stuff in a box but um, I, I'm thinking that with 180 degrees of temperature um, capability out of that foam that that should be enough for for the Cree Cree and that trying to take the 160 degree H foam uh, limit and then trying to heat treat that to 180 to 200 it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do it I was also concerned because when I'm trying to heat an entire sheet um, I'm not so sure that it isn't heat treating the edges of it a lot more than it is the center. So when you try and do a whole panel that you want to cut out on a CNC machine, instead of trying to individually heat treat each part, which you don't really want to do because they will shrink a small amount on you, you want to shrink the foam first and then cut them out. And again, I'm not really sure that the heat treating of an entire sheet is really uh, doing justice on what it should be. So I think going with the HT material, which has a higher temperature rating, is going to actually make it so that I don't have to worry about heat treating anymore and uh, I th I'm going to try that on the wings um, I think it's going to work well again the skin temperature of the HT is rated up to 100 degrees Celsius which is that's high that's really really high if your airplane is getting that hot oh my god so <laughs> I just don't think it's going to be an issue um, and even the foam, uh, you know, heat treating it, I don't think is going to be an issue either from what I did before. I'm just trying to be safer, uh, but then at the same time not have to do the work where I have to go back and heat treat it later. So I'm trying to source that right now. See, it's something that I can't really buy from any distributor. I have to go, I think, directly from Divini Cell and order it. And so I'm just trying to coordinate that at this point. Um, but that's the next step for me is really to work on the wings. Now, John has really helped me out a lot in the last you know, six months or more where he's been working on things like the, uh, the steel motor mount, um, the uh, steel flight control parts, um, the rudder pedals, anything that really requires welding, John's been actually working on for me. And I have several of those parts that he's provided to me. So I'm going to get a big jump start in a little bit as far as finishing the flight controls and getting the um, engine, uh, engine mount installed. Uh, I've also been able to figure out a source for exhaust tubes for my turboprop. So I've got a set of those on order. I'm hoping they come in and they fit and they work. Uh, but uh, if they do, that's, that's going to be great. I'm very happy about what I figured out there. So I'm, I'm still in the process of thinking about a lot of things. But as far as getting any progress and work done, I haven't really done anything uh, in quite some time. So um, anyway, I'm going to get back to work see if I can get this shop finished up and uh, start working on some videos for the Cree Cree. I just want to take a minute to kind of go over and, and, and talk to you guys about how I got where I am right now, just so you understand 
uh, you know, why I kind of uh, ghosted the channel for a little while and I apologize to everybody. I know everybody was following along with the build and I had no intention of stopping this build in the process. Uh, and what happened here as far as, uh, you know, creating a new uh, home for the creakery was kind of unexpected. So just to kind of try and bring everybody up to speed. Um, so back in 2019, my family and I moved to California for a job. Um, I got a job there full time as a software developer. And um, so in the middle of 2019 or, or the fall of 2019, I started that job. But in uh, what March of uh, 2020 was when the pandemic hit and I ended up getting laid off. So I moved to California for a new job, worked it for six months and then got laid off. Um, in the process though, once the pandemic started easing off a little bit, I did get rehired back part-time. Um, but I only have worked part-time since then and I'm currently only working part-time. And I, by part-time, uh, I mean only about 10 to 15 hours a week. Um, and so the other thing that happened during the process of the pandemic is the company that I was working for went 100% remote. So there was no requirement to be in, physically in California to go into an office to do work. Um, so what that meant is that my family and I were stuck there in California. We had no real way or finances to be able to buy a house in California. It's just too expensive. And because everything went remote, uh, my wife and I had talked about not staying in California long term. We just started looking around saying, you know, it doesn't make sense for us to try and, you know, put roots down here in California, try and figure out how to buy a house and struggle basically to, uh, to, to get by in the economy of California. So. We had moved out there from North Carolina, we had lived in Florida, and we kind of decided that because of the cost of living, we really wanted to head back to the East Coast uh, of the United States. And one thing led to another, we kind of talked about moving to Georgia at one point, but it was a two or three year plan. Uh, we ended up going on vacation in Georgia and going down and vacationing in Florida. and. Uh, I don't know what exactly happened. We literally went house shopping when we were in Georgia, just looking around, just to get an idea of pricing. And just one thing led to another. And uh, I looked at my wife and I said, I think we just bought a house. Um, so uh, so this, was, this was last August, so a year ago, um, that, uh, that that occurred. And of course, we hadn't planned on buying a house. We hadn't even planned on moving. I had kids in school. We weren't planning on pulling them out of school you know, mid-year and, and moving to another state. So. This kind of started a, a snowball effect here of trying to figure out and scramble how do we get from California to Georgia? What do I do with my workshop space in California? How do I recreate that in Georgia? And, um, you know, we went through several things. My first intention was to move to Georgia here, you know, keep the workshop in California, obviously, until we move, and then, uh, you know, rent a space here where I'm at in Georgia. However, once I started looking around, there was zero commercial space within an hour of where we purchased this house that uh, that was suitable for me to rent, something that was a thousand square feet or less because I just can't afford you know, a, a bigger shop space than that. Um, and so that turned into, well, we need to build a garage, a bigger garage on the property. And I went through the process. I even ordered a steel building, a 30 by 40 uh, steel building garage that I was gonna use um, we ended up having some excavation issues on the property where the cost of excavation to create a large enough area for the slab of concrete was going to cost way more than the cost of the building itself. Um, so that really turned into now what do we do? I, I, you know, I don't have enough room in the current garage here on the property to, to, you know, to, to have a business. I can't seem to rent a space uh, you know, to, to build the Cree Cree and, and continue the channel here. So. My wife and I kind of started talking. I said, well, if we've got an issue with that big a slab, that means we have to go two story. It's the only way we can get a building of the correct size in a smaller footprint. Um, and so I talked to her and I said, well, okay, well maybe we need to just build a workshop. I'd you know, seen these videos of people building these 16 by 32 barns or 16 by 16 workshop buildings. And I thought, well, I can do that. So, uh, so last fall, this would have been in November. So November and December, and probably the first week or two of January, I was actually here in Georgia building this building by myself. So I built this entire building by myself. The only subcontractor that I had here was, I did hire somebody to install the shingles on the roof. Um, I was able to do all of the, uh, 
roof sheathing and the tar paper from inside the building on the second story. So I was actually able to put ladders inside, work my way up each side, putting the, the, the plywood up and the tar paper up from the inside and then work my way across the top. So I didn't have to go up on the roof at all. And I just decided, you know what? I've never done shingles before. It's probably the one construction thing that I haven't done. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna get some bids on that and see if I can have somebody come out and install shingles. That was not a learning curve that I needed to go through. Plus I knew it was gonna take me weeks to put shingles on this building myself. So contacted a guy, came out and did it. Had two guys come out here. One day it was done and it cost me $800. So, I mean, it was no brainer. I'm glad I didn't even pull out a ladder and try and, you know, attempt to do that myself. So, um, so everything else though has been done by myself. Uh, and so I was here away from my family from November through the beginning of, of January of, uh, you know, end of last year, beginning of this year, you know, building this building and getting it to the dried in point. Um, I had the, uh, the, the, you know, all the windows were installed, the doors were installed. I actually had the shed doors, you know, wood boarded up. Um, and, uh, you know, got the, uh, the, the, you know, the paper on the outside of the building. I got the, uh, um, tar paper on the roof and so it was basically dried in to the point where I didn't have to worry about water you know rain weather and stuff like that um, and so that was from November through the beginning of January I missed the holidays with my family unfortunately I'd planned on getting back before Christmas but I just didn't make it I had too many uh, rain delays um, but anyway I got back in uh, to California then at the beginning of January uh, and that's of course when I did those uh, couple other videos that I posted um, you know on the channel uh, and then, um, let's see, I came back here, I believe it was in March, and I came back here in March to get, to work with the contractors that were getting the water and sewer from the existing house dug up to the building here. They just had it uh, stubbed out in the back. Um, I also had uh, Georgia Power out here, and they went ahead and ran the line underground to the outside of the uh, the building for the uh, electrical. So I went ahead and took care of that stuff in March and then ended up back home again. And of course we're packing and trying to figure out how to get moved here. Um, the other thing I will comment on, I drove back out here uh, in March when I came back because I pulled a trailer that I brought the Creekery out here. I brought the CNC machine and I basically brought all of the workshop out here with me on that, on, on that move. So the Creekery's actually been in here ever since there wasn't any walls in here. There wasn't any drywall in here. It was just dried in on the outside. The CNC machine's been in that room uh, ever since then. Also, I just took down the boards and plywood that I had on the shed doors and moved that stuff in. Um, so anyway, I had, I had the workshop basically moved out here then uh, in March. Um, we were planning to move out here in, at the end of May when my kids got out of school. So April and May, we were selling stuff. We were trying to get rid of everything we could because again, we were gonna drive out here uh, you know, pulling a van and trailer. Um, and so we didn't get out here till the end of May. So basically from, you know, November until, uh, you know, the end of May, I hadn't even seen the Creekery almost, you know, other than uh, doing the videos that I already recorded stuff on, you know, prior to coming here in November. So, um, so anyway, we've got here at the end of May and of course we're trying to move in. We've got a lot of stuff that needs to be done on this house. We bought an older home that needed to be completely renovated and we haven't renovated it. We've done little areas that were needed to, to be done, but we got to fix some floor issues and the kitchen's a disaster. But anyway, so I did focus most of my time on this building once I got back in May. I spent, I don't know, I probably spent four weeks working on house stuff and then I got back into here and finished all the drywall. Got all the you know got all the, the walls up. I had to get permits for all of this stuff, so I had to have them inspected. Uh, I got all the plumbing from the outside run in, connected the upstairs toilet, shower, uh, the sink that's over here. Um, I did all the electrical myself, so ran all the electrical lines. Um, and it's basically at a point now where I feel like I can start working again. I can actually start working on the airplane again, even though I don't have the drywall finished. I don't even have toolboxes and benches in here. At least I can start start doing some things on a creek creek and I can get the CNC machine working again. So that's kind of been the, the process that I've been going through for the last year. It's been hectic. I, I apologize to everybody who's been following the channel who has not seen any new videos from me. But anyway, I just want to let you all know, thank you for sticking around. I am planning on doing content from here forward. I'm here to stay. This is the new shop and uh, we're going to get this airplane done as quickly as possible. So thank you for sticking around.